Hello, I'm Michael. Uh, thanks for uh, choosing the view today. Um, this is day number six for the 11 26 20 1641 engine build. Uh, we're going to be installing uh, the pistons and cylinders, heads, push rod tubes, and uh, get it all ready for the next day, which is going to be um, getting the rocker arms, push rods in, and uh, doing a compression test. So. Uh, this is kind of a, one of those milestones in an engine rebuild. Um, this is where things get really start moving and things are coming together. So anyway, a um, couple things that you're going to need are um, piston cylinders, heads, push rod tubes. All right, let's let's get started. So here's the short block. Gonna move it a little bit so I could get better angles and stuff so I can install the pistons and cylinders. So I start with um, number one and I just work my way around one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. And then um, this is the uh, piston and cylinder that comes out of the box brand new. And there is some stamps on there. It's a, this is 87 millimeter. This is what it looks like. You can see the honing. And then also uh, you want to make a special point to um, for the arrow on the piston that faces the flywheel. So I'm pushing the piston all the way out so you could install the wrist pin. I have my uh, wrist pin clamps or I can't remember what they're called, but the little... Um, clamps to keep the wrist pin from falling out of the piston. And then I use a 15 millimeter with a short extension on my socket. And so I push the socket in and then you can see there's a groove where this uh, pin gets in there. And when I put it in, I usually like to move it back and forth to make sure it's in there. Um, you don't want to have any of those um, those pins or uh, springs to come off into your engine and just ruin your whole engine build. As you can see, that takes a while to build engines and you don't want to <clears throat> mess it up by a single mistake. And you can see the groove in the, in the piston right now where that, um, where the wrist pin clamp goes in there. And then I put some engine assembly lube on the wrist pin so I can push it in and out very easily. As you can see here. And then I usually take that wrist pin and push it into the connecting rod end to make sure everything's nice and good. And then previous to this point, I have installed engine assembly lube inside each of the holes of the um, connector rod where the wrist pin goes through. And this I'm just showing you uh, the, you have to lift the connecting rod a little bit to install the wrist pin into the position. It takes a little bit of a finessing and then you push the wrist pin along with, um, in order to get it all squared away. And then I install some gasket seal here. Um, if I don't do this, I usually get oil leaks. So I do that just to make sure we don't have any leaks in the, in the, in between the cylinder and the case. And then I put the piston into position and then the connect cylinder into position. And that's just showing you the, the piston again. And then um, this you want to make sure the flat end is in the center of the the engine and then make sure you install the wrist pin, pin uh, Clamp or whatever you want to call it in the center. So when you push your um, Wrist pin that it'll be you'll be pushing from the outside in instead of inside out You won't be able to do it if you do it the other way and then make sure you um, install all pins because the I've done it where I've installed all the pistons and cylinders and I've had springs left over and I have to figure out which one it, it goes into. 
So there's just finally putting on the last um, pen keeper here. And moving it back and forth just to make sure it's nice and and installed properly in that groove. And shortly after this, we install the air deflector underneath the cylinders. You'll see here pretty soon. Don't forget that part because um, that's how you get the cool engine. And this is just the two by four that I had. I just screwed a couple of like, five screws into, and then I have a, a paper bag underneath to catch any of the um, gasket seal gasket seal that I put on these push rod tubes. And there's where they go. And then I put the gasket cinch on the push rod tube, and then I install the push rod tube seal. So it's very kind of messy, as you can see. And um, I'm working relatively quickly. And be careful that these pushrod tubes are very sharp. So you don't want to accidentally um, cut your finger on one of the ends because it, it, they, they are sharp. And then I put the gasket cinch on the actual seal before I install it onto the case and the head. And there's the head. That's the tin I was talking about. You want to make sure you put that nice and snug underneath the cylinders so the, the air can be diverted correctly and cool your engine. And then there's the head with the valves that I just showed you. Nice and clean. And then just slip it over the, the, the studs there. Um, sometimes the studs are a little cocky or, or, or bent a little bit. And so it takes a little bit to get those heads on. And then right now I'm just tightening up all the the 15 millimeter nuts that go on to the end of the studs. And then here is the uh, bolt pattern that I need to torque down everything. So I'm using number one, uh, step number one, which is seven foot pounds. And so I do that first. I think that's just to tighten everything up, uh, prepare for the, the larger foot pounds. And then I set my torque wrench. And just remember that sometimes torques at lower torques are um, harder to hear the pop or the click. And so I usually kind of rock it back and forth to hear the click until um, I do. And then I, I replace uh, and then I stop. Um, so I do the step of number one on the first side. And then I go to the other side. So I'm going to be installing three and then four. And then remember to rotate your engine um, to top dead center for each cylinder that you are piston that you are um, installing. And then I'm going to install this the same way I did the other side. I just don't show you. And there you go. And I put the wrist pin in. That one was a little more difficult because uh, I had too much stuff in the way in my garage. And just oftentimes, depending on what you want your compression to be, there are shims that you could put in between the um, cylinder and the case and um, just consult your local or, you know, the specs and stuff online or whatever you want to do. Um, but I'm, I'm doing kind of a stock situation, so um, I'm not so important, so interested or concerned about the compression too much I do want to make sure it's not too high and that was a uh, photo of the cylinders and pistons in place before the head is on and then um, this is just tightening down the head before I start torquing it and what's weird about this one is when I took out the heads before the studs actually came out with it so I had to improvise and and do some other things and i also put sealant on the studs before i put them in the case and then now i'm going to be using the number or step two for the torquing and so there's a couple different things so there's you start with 12 foot pounds then 20 foot pounds and then the my engine is a 23 foot pounds to start stop with and then what you do is you go around alternating between the heads so what i do is um Start with the 12 foot pounds, do one and two, then three and four, 
and then go to 20 foot pounds, do one and two, and then do the three and four, and then I do 23, the one side, and then the other side. And then I also go back one more time with 23 foot pounds and do one and two and then three and four. And then that's kind of the completion of the process of torquing down the heads for your engine. Um, I know I have a Jeep and the, the head specs for torquing down those bolts are quite a lot larger than the Volkswagen Beetle um, or Type 1 engine here. But it's, um, this is just what we do and it's, it's really neat. So there's one side, and then as soon as that's done, I go to the other side and torque down that one. Using the bolt pattern that's on the sheet, there's eight bolts, so you just go through, and I usually count, you know, one, two, three, up to eight to make sure I don't miss any torque specs on the side that I'm working on. And then I adjust it to the 20 foot pounds, and then do the 20 foot pounds for the, the one and two side and then after that is done I go over to four and three and four side and torque it that way and uh, before torquing it too much I usually look at the push rod tubes because sometimes they like to get out of place and bend and um, it's just kind of a situation later on you have to deal with to remove the head re um, elongate the push rod tubes so you can when you torque it down next then it will be torqued and uh, push rod tubes will squish appropriately this is the uh, torque into 23 foot pounds this is the last torque so that's um, the first torque on the 3-4 side and then I'm going to go to the 1-2 side and torque that one more time and then once that is done go to the 3-4 side and then torque that down and then we'll be done. So I, I think I do say later on that this is, um, this job today was about two hours of work. That's getting everything together and then just installing everything. Like I said before, make sure you plan for three to four hours because sometimes you, you run into issues and you may need to um, do that. I would recommend do not install one side, come back the next day, and then install the other side. You want to do it all in one shot so everything's nice and even and torqued. And there you go, nice clean engine ready for uh, the next step, which is compression test. All right, thanks again for uh, joining me today uh, as we installed the pistons and cylinders, heads, and then the push rod tubes. Um, this took approximately two hours to do. Um, it was uh, pretty simple. Just remember to um, put the pistons at top dead center when you install the, the actual piston onto the cylinder. And then um, these new cylinders are nice and pistons because um, the pistons are inside the cylinder and you just pop them out and put the um, wrist pin in there and then put them onto the crank uh, connecting rods inside the engine. Um, so next time we're going to be uh, installing the push rod tubes or sorry push rods. We're going to install push rods, rocker arms and then um, fill it up with some oil and then do a compression test and see where everything is and then we'll probably, um, well we won't install um, spark plugs quite yet, but um, feel free to comment below if any questions or anything. Uh, the, the cheat sheet that I've been working off of, I've been working off of for about uh, 15, 20 years and it's uh, served me well and um, once you get to know what you're doing, you get a pretty good feel of uh, how, which, what's the bolt pattern and stuff like that to torque down your engine heads. And then um, also uh, don't forget to like the video and uh, I look forward to you on day seven where we're doing the uh, um, 
rest of the build here before we start an engine tent. Uh, which this is exciting because um, all our efforts of tearing down and, and reconfiguring and trying to get all the parts together to rebuild our engine is finally starting to um, quickly come together and become a whole engine and then we can put it inside the bug and it, it's, it's awesome. Um, so you at home, I hope your engine's going well and feel free to, you know, any questions, let me know. And then um, also like my like my uh, video and then uh, um, there's also some other Volkswagen videos on there too to check out. And thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and, and I hope you have a, a great day. Thanks. Bye.